YouTube channel. As you guys might have seen in my last video, I said I had a new book that I wanted to review and I actually picked up a copy of the uh, Llewellyn Sabbath Essentials book for Ostara and you could see I have dog eared the heck out of it because I have been reading it for the past couple days and I just wanted to review it a little bit because I have done one for uh, Litha, I've done one for Yule, I have the one for Lamas but I never reviewed that one so maybe I'll do that one this year if you guys are interested in seeing that. I haven't been able to find many uh, YouTube videos on these books so I figured I would go ahead if you guys were interested in uh, learning more about them. I also post about these books on my Instagram page so you can check me out at Bohemia Magic Studios. I did a lot of the craft projects for Litha and I have a whole playlist about all the uh, projects that I did for Litha. I did Litha vlog. It was just a lot of fun. I just really ate up the whole book. Unfortunately have not been able to do the same for the other Sabbaths but I really want to try to make it a point to uh, hone in on the other Sabbaths a little more as well. So this one is Ostara and this is Rituals, Recipes, and Lore for the Spring Equinox. And it has a little bunny and it has little uh, flowers and I think that's a, a helio flower or maybe it's a hydrangea. And then there's a little egg on it. And some of you might notice that uh, Ostara has a lot of the same symbology and images as Easter, which is the Christian um, or Catholic holiday. I was actually raised Catholic, so I was raised celebrating Easter, but the more I got into earth-based spiritual paths, I got more into the Sabbaths of the Wheel of the Year. All of these Llewellyn Sabbath Essentials books are set up the same exact way, and they're all usually written by different authors as well, which is nice because you get a little bit of variety of different authors' points of views, so you get a little taste of different backgrounds and cultures and all that stuff. So they're all set up kind of the same way. They all have a section that explains the old ways, the new ways. They have a section on spells and divination, a spells on recipes and crafts, which I love that section. I love to cook, I love to craft, so I'm always hitting up the uh, recipes and crafts section for a lot of ideas. And you can also find a lot of ideas on my Pinterest page. I um, have separated all of my boards into Sabbaths, so I have pinned a lot of cool stuff for the different Sabbaths, so you could just go check that out. My Ostara board is awesome. Awesome. I have a lot of cool little egg dye things and a lot of cute little ideas for that. Recipes and crafts, prayers and invocations, rituals and celebrations. Then they have a whole section of correspondences for Ostara, meaning like colors, elements, gods and goddesses that you want to work with, etc, etc. They have further reading, other books and texts that you can read up on, a bibliography, and an index. So let's just get started. So here's the Wheel of the Year and I kind of go through this in all of my book reviews for these Sabbath Essentials. And right now we are right here. This is the Northern Hemisphere. I am in New Jersey in the United States, so we are in the Northern Hemisphere. Those of you in Australia, New Zealand, that's more Southern Hemisphere, so you're gonna be in Maybon right now. So you could see the cross of the Sabbaths. If you're in Northern Hemisphere, you're here. If you're Southern Hemisphere, you're here. And they also give you a wheel for the Southern Hemisphere. So it's very helpful to you no matter where you are. And this whole section kind of goes into the whole Wheel of the Year and how it works and it tells you a little bit about each of the Sabbaths on it. Our first section will be the Old Ways and I found some of the stuff really interesting. Um, so what is the equinox exactly? The equinox is all about the end of the winter. Many people are coming out of time filled with cold and darkness. The winter is really depressing. So when spring rolls around, I feel this like sudden burst of energy and like I just want to be creative because the sun is out, it's warm out, I actually want to do things, I don't want to sit around in my pajamas all day. So Ostara is also known as the Vernal Equinox, falls generally on March 20th in, in the Northern Hemisphere, September in the Southern Hemisphere, and marks when the sun hits its zenith, the point of, on the celestial sphere directly over the equator. Each time of the equinox shifts about six hours, making it possible for the precise equinox to fall between March 20th and March 21st. Ostar is the official start of spring in the Northern Hemisphere, whether you live in an area that is warm year round or in an area where the ground is still covered with snow when this date rolls along. There's kind of a complicated mathematical formula 
to figure out the precise equinox, but most people use an almanac calendar or look up the day, or you could probably find it on Google somewhere. Though the equinox is said to be equal amounts of day and night, it literally breaks down to mean equal night. This isn't exactly true. It all depends on where you live. Those living closer to the equator still see more daylight than darkness, while those further away from the equators will see less daylight, something that is often overlooked when people talk about us having an equal amount of daylight and nighttime. The most important aspect, therefore, of the equinox isn't really the amount of daylight or nighttime, it's the moment when the sun does actually hit its zenith. So this happens all over the world at the same time, whether you are in America or Australia. So after Yule, because of the tilt of the Earth's axis, the sun's light moves farther north and gives those of us in the northern hemisphere days that are growing in length. At Ostara, the day and night are close to equal with the sun still growing stronger and the days longer. I actually always thought Ostara was about the goddess Eostra, but this book actually says different. Eostra is said to be a goddess of spring, fertility, and the dawn, but there is actually very little information about her. Research shows the first mention of her was in the 8th century by a monk named Bede, the B-E-D-E. -E. According to, to him, the pagans celebrated Eostra with feasts before the Christian holiday Easter came into existence. Some claim that she's a Celtic goddess, other claim she's a Germanic one. It's still up for debate whether she actually ever existed and celebrated in the ways we have recently been told. We don't really know much about how she was celebrated or if, if she truly existed at all. There's many myths and stories surrounding her. One story in particular we are told that one day in winter she found a poor helpless injured bird that was dying and in order to save the bird's life she turned the bird into a hare but the changes didn't fully take place while the bird now looked like a hare it still had the ability to lay eggs the hare decorated the eggs and then gave them to Eostra as gifts for saving her life but where did the story come from the story is actually based on a Ukrainian folk tale that explains the origins of Sanki I hope I'm saying that right the beautifully decorated eggs so it basically gives a whole timeline of when Eostra was mentioned in her relationship to Ostara and it actually says here that Gerald Gardner the creator of the uh, Wiccan religion or the Wiccan path rather pulled together customs from different traditions and came up with seven Sabbaths added in the vernal equinox also known as Ostara and bringing the total Sabbaths to eight putting them approximately six weeks apart. Nowhere in recorded history did any one group of pagans practice the entire eight Sabbaths and I, I think even to this day there's no one person that celebrates each and every Sabbath. Some people only celebrate the ones that resonate with them and some people try to celebrate all of them. I've just been kind of like celebrating them as I feel called to and it's not you know right or wrong it just all depends on what you're comfortable with um, what fits into your lifestyle. So this book says that even though there isn't any hard evidence of the existence of the goddess Eostra it doesn't mean that you can't celebrate her as a symbol of spring anyway so it really all depends on what kind of gods or goddesses you want to work with um, for whatever Sabbath you decide to celebrate. So it really is all a matter of per personal preference. There really are no rules here. Um, and the people that say that there are rules, I don't know what to tell you. Just do you, boo, just do you. And then that goes into a bunch of sacred sites all around the world, uh, marking the equinox, like the Druids and the Mayans. There's even some in the United States. There's one in Vermont. There's one in Salem, New Hampshire. See, there's one in New Mexico. And then even all over the world in Cambodia, Malta, Cornwall. There's a whole section on other monoliths all over the globe that acknowledge the equinox. Then it goes into Ostar's relationships to other holidays, different festivals from different cultures throughout throughout the different times, celebration of springtime deities, Dionysus and Persephone were both celebrated as deities of spring, uh, Dionysus god of plants, Persephone the goddess of the underworld, kidnapped by Hades, and Demeter her mother was upset about her missing daughter and the whole thing with the pomegranate. This section also goes into different creatures that you can associate with Ostara, not only chicks, eggs, and bunnies, um, but they also talk about the phoenix, a magical creature of optimism, you know, the bird that rises from its ashes. And then there's also another magical creature called the puka. It's a mysterious and mischievous shape-shifting Irish creature of the fae. So a puka is a fairy. Fairies are also a big symbol of springtime. So then the next section is the new ways. This is for the modern witch. This just gives you some different ideas that can get you into the spring mindset, reinventing yourself. You can take up a meditation practice, 
practice, do some yoga, find a form of exercise. Uh, you can actually get in your garden, plant new flowers. This whole section goes into the whole tradition about the eggs. They decorate eggs in China, Italy, Mexico. Uh, there's a paper mache egg called the cascarones filled with conf confetti. Uh, you might be able to find ones with small toys or candy as well. And they're a great way to bestow blessings on someone. So you can dye eggs. There's uh, egg hunts, egg toss, rolling an egg down a hill, carry an egg on a spoon from start to finish line. You could do relay races with eggs. They're just giving you different ideas with eggs uh, that can keep you active or get you out of your uh, cocoon <laughs> your winter cocoon for the springtime so yeah there's a whole bunch of like activities they give you to do with playing with eggs it's really funny actually so the next section is get out and go somewhere they tell you uh, to get out and do some spring field trips they give you ideas on where to go go to a zoo go to a farm and i love going to farms because they have a lot of fresh produce or even when i went to the lavender farm uh, lavender's not in season yet. Yeah, I think that blooms more toward the summertime. There might be some things that you can get out and pick if it's native or if it's growing in your area. So it's also telling you the colors that you use. A lot of pastel colors are used around Ostara. Of course, the coloring the eggs. Kids do that a lot. Others see the equinox as a true beginning of the sun's power over the night. After today, there will be more sun than darkness until the autumnal equinox. Therefore, it is a celebration of the light's victory over the dark. Sun symbols are often a part of this celebration. So kind of like Litha, it reminds us of the sun's growing strength and that we too can grow in strength each day if we just decide to work on doing that ourselves. It's all about making positive change within yourself. Honey and maple syrup are two other symbols used at Ostara. I did not know that. Both can be used as offerings to whatever deities you are working with. I do know that in um, for Beltane, I like to leave a little honey offering for the fairies because Beltane is the fairy fire festival. So I really love working with the fairies and the fae. So that's really cute. So it says, while Christians and followers of some gods saw this as a time of sacrifice, mm -hmm. uh, that generally is not the mood in most pagan celebrations. We deal with sacrifice on the opposite side of the wheel. Our focus is now on the returning light and renewed life that came because of the previous sacrifice. But the sacrifice is not the main point. Instead, we focus heavily on the aspects of renewal, which I love. I love renewal. I love the, the plants coming back, the leaves coming back, feeling rejuvenated, feeling like I wanna get out and do things and be creative and uh, get the garden going get some new projects underway, and that is always what springtime means to me. So the whole beginning is pretty much about the old ways, the new ways, a little bit about the wheel of the year, and then we come to a section on spells and divination. You don't really need a lot of fancy tools to to do spells and divination. All you really need is your intent, maybe a candle or two, even that. Like, you don't really need all that stuff. You just need the power within yourself and the power to believe that you can make it happen. So a spell is simply a way of making change occur. So the spells in this section are going to deal with helping making certain changes and manifest things in your life, working with the energies of the equinox. So Stara is about new beginnings. Sometimes starting over is one of the hardest things we can ever imagine doing. Like starting a new job or uh, starting a new garden when you're, you plant the seeds and you don't see anything yet, it can get really discouraging because you don't know if it's working. And the same thing goes for a new project. You plant, you still have to plant those seeds and uh, you probably won't see any kind of fruition for a while because it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication and sometimes you just really have to put in the time and effort to see those things manifest. It's not even just about like putting the intent in and like whatever, if you want to call it casting a spell or a law of attraction, whatever you want to call it, the, the intent can be there, but action is equally just as important. You could sit there and wish for it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen unless you put in the work that you need to make those goals a reality. This whole section is about spell work and um, different kinds of little things you can do to assist you in the springtime, getting back out there and into the world and making your goals happen. So there's a spell to assist in difficult changes, spell to restore a balance to your life, which is good. We all need a little balance in our lives, right? Spring is in the air, love attraction spell. So those of you who are still single and ready to mingle, um, you could do this little attraction spell. This one has, tells you how to make blessing eggs. And then there's also an egg cleansing and divination spell. So then there's uh, divination by Omancy. 
So Omancy, I've never heard of this, or Umancy. This is the practice of divining with eggs. So they used to do this in the old days. So Ovomancy is, an, or egg divination, is when you separate the whites from the yolk and then pour, quickly pour them into hot water and interpret the shapes as they form. Another form of divination with eggs is to tell whether a mother is having a single baby or multiples, take a fresh egg and rub it on a mother's pregnant belly for a few minutes, then crack the egg into a bowl. The number of yolks predicts how many babies the mother will have. It says it can be a scary divination for some people, particularly if there is blood in the egg or if the yolk is broken. These are signs of a miscarriage or other problems with the birth. But, you know, <laughs> you should always consult a doctor. Let's just talk real right here for a second. Don't rely on Eggmancy to tell you anything about the birth of your child. <laughs> um, go to a doctor. It's always fun to do these things, but you know, take them with a little bit of a grain of salt. You always want to consult an actual physician. There's also Floromancy, which, which is the divination using flowers. And there's Daphnomancy, which binds Pyromancy using bay laurel leaves to predict the future and some sort of bonfire. There's a spring tower spread for coming changes. I always like to do a nice tarot spread at the beginning of every season just to see where I'm at, you know, consult the cards about my goals and what I want to achieve and what I need to do to make those things happen. Recipes and crafts. This is always my favorite section. I love baking, I love gardening, I love doing all those fun things. Probably even more so than spell work. I find it very meditative, very relaxing, and it's just my thing. And I love home and gardens and making everything look very pretty. I love aesthetic, I love fresh flowers, crystals, all that stuff. It says while preparing for the Sabbaths may be a lot of work, it is a lot of fun as well. Pulling ingredients and supplies together to transform them from ordinary items into tasty food and pretty decorations is its very own kind of magic, and I completely agree. Food is also the center of getting together, laughing, joking, talking with your friends. It's also getting warmer out, so you could take a lot of this outdoors, get your grill going, get your fire pit going, get outside and get the, all those wonderful flavors together, no matter what you decide to cook up. This this book has some great recipes, whether you're vegan, or vegetarian, or if you eat meat, or if you're a pescatarian, whatever you consider yourself, this book has got you covered. They have a steamed asparagus with lemon recipe, which is really yummy. I love asparagus. Stuffed eggs with stone ground mustard. It sounds really good. It's kind of like a deviled, it's like a spin on a deviled egg recipe. Grecian goddess quiche. I love me some quiche. And this uses feta cheese, so it's that gives that little bit of a Greek feel to it. Mint lamb chops. Yeah, it's just fresh mint, minced garlic, salt, pepper, olive oil, really simple. Hot cross buns. So now we're getting into the baking aspect of everything. And they have a recipe for honey cake, ham and parsley sauce, uh, cheesy dill mashed potatoes. I am getting so hungry just reading these. Grasshoppers, which if, if you ever bought Girl Scout cookies, you know they're those like chocolate covered minty cookies. Those are my favorite. I love putting those in the freezer and then adding them to like an ice cream dish. But this grasshopper is for adults only because it is an alcoholic drink and it's one part cream, one part white cream de cacao and one part creme de menthe. So you mix all three parts in a shaker, pour over ice in a martini glass, or you can add it to a blender with ice cubes and blend until smooth for a frozen drink. So they also give you alcoholic beverage ideas as well. Kids spring green punch. So this just tells you how to make some punch with the sherbet and the soda. You know how we used to do when we were kids. Raw asparagus and avocado soup for anybody who is vegan. Honey ginger carrots garlic mushrooms, so here's more of the vegetarian and vegan stuff. Honey lime scallops, if you like seafood. Thai chili fish and peppers. Egg drop soup, and then it goes into more crafts, the cascarones, uh, which are homemade. You can fill them with glitter, chalk powder, and they're supposed to be messy, and you um, are supposed to use them outside. So those are a lot of fun, it looks like. Uh, you decorate the eggshells. To use them spiritually, you need a good list of correspondences, including colors, herbs, oils, um, or you could prepare one with a specific person in mind. Maybe diet, paint or dye it in the color that will have some significance to the person that you wanna make it for, or perhaps a gentle blue or peaceful lavender to help you go to sleep at night. It's all it depends on your intent. Um, then there's eggshell plant pots, which are cute because I've seen these on Pinterest. I actually think I have these pinned on my Pinterest boards. They're these little eggs, like you crack an egg um, and then you don't throw the yolk away, you save it and instead you fill it with dirt and then you plant like little um, seeds in it and then you can grow little little seedlings in them. Cat grass is a recommended grass seed to use. Um, and then they look like this.
how cute is that? And then you could like paint or draw your little symbols on there for Ostara or any kind of goddess symbols or correspondence symbols you want to put on there. Painted garden stones. Um, these are a lot of fun. I really love painting garden stones. You can make a fairy garden, um, put paint them bright colors, put your favorite symbols on them. As long as you use outdoor paint and outdoor paint sealer so you don't get a big gooby paint mess the next time it rains. Also, if you go to like a Home Goods or like a Marshalls or even like a Joann's or Michael's Hobby Lobby, most of them have a garden aisle and they sell those like little uh, fairy or troll figurines you could like buy little fairy houses or you can make your own fairy house out of sticks twigs grass acorns acorn shells whatever you could find outside you can make a fairy house out of it and you could put it by your garden so the fairies can keep your garden safe or they might even eat a little something. So it all depends on the fairies that you are attracting. You can also write brief quotes on the rocks. It, it recommends using the quote from Puck in, Sh in uh, Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. It's a great quote to include a fairy garden as there are many more from the Shakespearean play if you would like to include some from there. Also, there's that website allquotes.com that you can hit up for ideas. Then there's Ostara Terraniums. Also, they sell those little glass orbs in uh, craft stores. You can fill them with a little moss and a little glitter and maybe a little fairy figurine or something. Hang them from your bay window, hang them from your trees outside. Um, just get creative with it. You can also make a book terrarium like this. And this also tells you how to make that. You could decorate with colors. It basically tells you what colors are great for Ostara. Yellows, oranges, greens, blues, violets, pinks, anything pastel. So there's many different ways to incorporate these colors into your decorations and your altar. Uh, you can also decorate the eggs in these colors and put them in small baskets on your altar. You can use plastic eggs or you can use real eggshells. It really all depends on what you want to use. Small knickknacks of rabbits and chicks. Uh, I have those all over the place. I actually even have a little bird's nest right here that I bought at the craft supply store and I just filled it with my own little um, homemade seashell candle and some crystals and some flower petals. So you can, you know, make your own spring decor and it's a lot of fun to place on your altar space as well. And then the next section is about prayers and invocations. There's the god and the goddess. We have a little uh, sage wand here, a little bell, some mala beads, and some crystals, crystal quartz points. So when it comes to the truly spiritual side of celebrating any Sabbath, meditations, prayers, and invocations are what really help you connect with the divine and your own higher sense of self. While celebrating and feasting are a lot of fun, the real work takes place during these practices. If you don't already meditate, Ostara, being a new time, new beginnings, it's the perfect time to start. There are different forms of meditations. You can use a guided meditation, uh, which is a, literally a person on a recorded track you can listen to in headphones. I, I like to listen to these while I'm going to sleep at night. <laughs> meditation, like sitting there like this, and listening to a recorded track, um, it's not for everyone. You could use gardening as your meditation. You could use drawing or working in a sketchbook as your meditation. You could use anything as a form of meditation. You know, do a little spa night. Um, by yourself, like have some quiet time when everybody else is sleeping in the house and give yourself a manicure, a pedicure, a foot bath, a crystal bath, a moon bath, any type of thing that really helps you quiet and center and focus. Um, and I love also using essential oils to help me do that, help me relax. Vetiver is a good grounding one. I like to use my Serenity Serenity D, Serenity doTERRA blend is a great one to help me kind of mellow out a little bit. So it also tells you how to choose locations for your meditation. Look for a location free of noise and other people. Just make sure it's peaceful, quiet, and private. Those are the most important things. Journaling is a great form of meditation. Get your thought, getting your thoughts out onto a piece of paper. Meditation for evaluating balance in your life. So it just gives you different meditational ideas. And then there's a meditation for new beginnings. There's a prayer to the god and goddess to bring balance into your life prayer to the goddess to assist in new beginnings brief invocation for working with the goddess on ostara brief invocation for working with the god on ostara and it tells you the different offerings you can offer to the different gods and goddesses like hard-boiled eggs milk honey mead spring flowers and then something sweet and delicious marshmallow fluff they recommend if, you've, if you have an outdoor altar, leave some offerings in the name of your deity as a thank you to them. So then this last section is rituals of celebration. So this is basically the ceremonial aspect of your practice. Uh, whether you're a solitary uh, practitioner or if you work with a group, 
it all depends on what you want to do. Um, they have an Osara ritual for a solitaire uh, to invoke the four elements and the god and goddess to ask them help you restore balance into your life. So these are a little more lengthy. And then they have a section here where you can list what you learned from your meditation. Um, and you could always put this in a journal as well. They have an Ostara ritual for a larger group, not just by yourself, but I tend to like doing things by myself. They have an Ostara ritual for two people. And then here's a section of all the correspondences. The main keywords of uh, Ostara are balance, birth, change, fertility, growing in strength, light, new beginnings, rebirth, rejuvenation, and renewal. Magical focuses are abundance, balance, change, fertility, growth, lust, new beginnings, new love, passion, prosperity, and purification. Um, the suggested workings for around this time are bonfires, outdoor spaces, and altars, divinations focused on the coming year, and bringing balance into one's life planning and creating fairy, flower, and vegetable gardens, purifying and protecting the home and all who live there, including animals. Another great spring ritual to do is spring cleaning. Clean out your closets, give away clothes that you don't need anymore, donate them to the poor, donate them to people who need them more than you do, dust the cobwebs, put, uh, do the sage around your house, um, spray mint around your door areas which keeps bugs away and little critters so there's a lot of different things you can do uh, not just little spells and stuff but you know things to get your home ready and prepared for the warmer months to come this gives you a whole list of deities and heroes archetypes uh, astrological timing and associated planets colors herbs different trees flowers crystals and stones metals animals totems and mythical creatures and scents for oils incense potpourri uh, they give you tarot keys, symbols and tools, foods, drinks, activities, and traditions of practice. Acts of service, litter pickup, you could do some litter pickup, get the planet ready for spring. There are other names for Ostara and other pagan traditions are Albin, Albin Eiler, which is Celtic, meaning the light of the earth. Festival of summer finding, also known as Asatru, or vernal or spring equinox. Um, also, there are other holidays and tradition occurring during Ostara in the Northern Hemisphere, whether they're Catholic, Christian, and then there's like Passover, which is uh, the 15th day of Nisan, which begins on the, the night of the full moon after the Northern Vernal Equinox. Then secular holidays like St. Patrick's Day and other holidays and traditions, the Feast of Jupiter, Juno, Minerva, Michaelmas, Birth of the Virgin Mary, um, and uh, there's a secular uh, holiday known as Floriade, I think that's how you say it, the largest flower festival in the southern hemisphere. I'm really not sure if I said that correctly. But uh, here is another section on further reading so you can read a little more on uh, their customs and traditions um, having to do with Ostara. Uh, then there's the index in the back and then a little section about the author who is Carrie Connor of Chicagoland, Illinois. She's a high priestess of the Gathering Grove and has been practicing her craft for 25 years. She is the author of three other books of magic and her writing has appeared in The Blessed Bee, B-E-E, -E, like bzzz, Sage Woman, Pangaea, and New Witch. She runs the Pagan Review, a website that provides reviews of pagan products. She also recently started Nurturing Necessities, a nonprofit charitable organization. And uh, she also has another book called Spells for Tough Times, Crafting Hope When Faced with Life's Thorniest Challenges. And it also, it tells you where you can find all of Llewellyn's stuff on social media. And then it gives you a little rundown of the other Sabbath Essentials books. And then here's her other book. That's basically it, you guys. So just to read the back real quick, Ostara, also known as the spring equinox, is a time of renewal, a time to plant seeds as the earth once again comes to life. This guide to the history and modern celebrations of Ostara shows you how to perform rituals and work magic to renew your power and passion for living and growing. It contains rituals, recipes, lore, spells, divination, crafts, correspondences, invocation, prayers, and meditation. Llewellyn Sabbath Essentials explores the old and new ways of celebrating the seasonal rites that are the cornerstones of the witch's year. It's a celebration of the season of returning sunlight and the bursting forth of the birds, bees, and the trees. And the flowers. <laughs> and the fairies. Can't forget the fairies. Yeah, that's basically it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this book review today. I really enjoyed doing this for you and diving into all the uh, cultures and traditions of Ostara. And I'm probably going to read this a lot more in depth um, throughout the rest of the book because I kind of just quickly flipped through it for you today. And um, I started like truly reading it the other day. It's a pretty quick read. So that's it. That's Ostara. And I, and I hope you guys have a lovely start to spring. Get out in that garden. Thank you so much 
much for joining me today. Uh, the next video will, you will see on my channel will probably be an egg dyeing tutorial or um, a bread baking tutorial. I'm not sure which I want to do yet, but no matter what it is, you could probably find it on the info card somewhere over here or in the description down below. My name is Justina and I am the creator of Bohemian Magic Studios. You can find me on my Instagram feed where I post daily things either on my feed or in my stories. You can also find me on my website, bohemianmagicstudios.weebly.com at the time. I'm in between websites right now, so I'm kind of trying to do some site cleanup, but definitely check out the website if you want more info and tips and tricks on how to live a magical life. Until my next video, I hope to see you guys back real soon. Mwah. Thank you so much once again for joining me here today. Bye! Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe to get more of my magical videos delivered right to your inbox. Would you like more magical tips and tricks for the season? I've started up a monthly mailing list which you can sign up to through the link in the description down below. How are you celebrating, Ostara? Please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and talk more about this beautiful Sabbath on the Wheel of the Year. And lastly, if you would like more of my videos about the Wheel of the Year, you can watch them through the playlist here. Enjoy, and I hope to see you back real soon.